Of course it's a voluntary union. So, why, so why can't one member decide it, it wants to walk away from the club? There's no rule. Nobody's saying that that can't happen. Are there any circumstances in which you would allow another referendum on Scottish independence? It's a generational decision. A generation hasn't passed. If at one minute past 10 p.m. we have a yes vote, we are powerful. If we have a no vote, at one minute past 10 p.m. we are powerless. That's what the referendum is really about. Power or powerlessness. Well, let, let me take head on this once the generation point. In, in 2014, at the last referendum, now almost a decade ago, uh, those of us arguing for independence, yes, said to people, uh, make sure you don't lose this opportunity. We might never get the chance again. But no politician can stand in the way of democracy. Democracy is not a single fixed moment in time. People in a democracy have the right to change their minds if circumstances change. And nobody can argue that circumstances have not changed since 2014. You know, back then, Scotland was told we would lose European Union membership if we voted for independence, uh, and now we're out of the European Union because we didn't. Right, Mario Rossi from Dalwoodton in Somerset. What are you going to do to get Scotland on board? Because I'm sick to death hearing about Nicola Sturgeon trying to break up the Union. And I think the best thing to do with Nicola Sturgeon is ignore her. I think she's... <laughs> I think, look, she's, I'm sorry. It's a bit difficult when she's first minister, though. She's, she's got a democratically elected position yeah, just look, as you would. I'm sorry, she's an attention seeker, sir. That's what she is. They know and are utterly terrified by the prospect that when we look outwards, we see all around us the evidence right there in front of our eyes, the evidence that independence works. For countries of Scotland's size, independence works. Our neighbours in Northwest Europe are wealthier than the UK, all of them. They are more equal than the UK. They have lower levels of poverty. They have higher productivity, which drive better living standards. All of them recovered better from the financial crisis of 2008. They have stronger public finances. As a proportion of pre-retirement wages, they all have higher pensions. And of course, they all get the governments they vote for. In measure after measure after measure, the evidence is overwhelming and conclusive. Independence works. It works for Denmark, for Ireland, for Austria, for Norway, for Finland, and for so many others beside. These are disparate countries with different resources and economies but independence works for all of them. With all our resources and talents, independence will work for Scotland too. When the SNP uh, government say that it's the time to start talking about a second independence referendum, I say that just at this point, all our energies should be focused on our negotiations with the F uh, European Union about our future relationship. Uh, and to be talking about an independence referendum would, I think, make it more difficult for us to be able to get the right deal for Scotland and the right deal for the UK. And more than that, I think it wouldn't be fair to the people of Scotland because they'd be being asked to make a crucial decision without the necessary information, without knowing what the future partnership will be or what the alternative of an independent Scotland would, uh, would look like. So 
I think just now we should be putting all our energies into ensuring that we get that right deal for the UK and the right deal for Scotland in our negotiations with the European Union. Uh, that's my job as Prime Minister. Right now, we should be working together, not pulling apart. We should be working together to get that right deal for Scotland, that right deal for the UK. So I say that's my job as Prime Minister. And so for that reason, uh, I say to the SNP, now is not the time. A, a referendum in, in 2014. It was decisive. Uh, it was, I think, by common consent, uh, a once in a, a generation event. Gender panels, do you rule that out ever? Would you allow that? Well, the last one was for generation, and so it's, it's, the generation hasn't changed. So, no, not forever, but not, not at least for a decade. Um, um, not in the next 10 years. And so if it's a no vote by a whisker, again, is that it? Do you come back for another referendum in a few years' time? I mean, you've talked in the past about it being for a generation. Is that still your view? Yes, it is. I mean, and by that, what I mean is, if you remember the previous... I mean, I know you do. Constitutional referendum in Scotland, there was one in 1979, and then <clears> the <throat> next one was 1997. That's what I mean by a political generation. In my opinion, and it is just my opinion, then this is a, a once-in-a-generation opportunity so for Scotland. So if the people of Scotland are allowed to choose, how may this, they choose? Because, and a song, this, because this, this debate proves why Scotland does face a choice. And of course it's Scotland's right to choose its own future. I accept that. But, but this, is exa this exact yeah. argument shows what the, what the choices are in this election. Do we really want the next parliament to be an extension of these arguments? Frankly, this circus for the yeah. next five years. We will get to the other issues, the biggest, but we are talking about the biggest now, If you don't want to talk about that, Anna. it's fine. You can sit it out. Mandates come from the electorate in an election, they don't come from pollsters. Right. John Curtis shouldn't decide when the next referendum is, it should be the people of Scotland that decide when the next referendum is. All right. More than two thirds of people do not want a referendum over the course of the But it's an important year. principle here. You stand in an election, you get, a, you get elected, you take power, you say you're going to man, uh, implement your manifesto. The SNP was clear in its manifesto, it wanted a second independence referendum. Well, the Do they have a mandate? Well, look, I'll, I'll give you another example. It's not for me to implement their mandate. For me, it's to stand for what I believe. No, but it's a, prin it's a so, point so, of principle. So, so, so well, of I course, you've got your so, own views, but is it, is it not a point of principle? But, but let me, you stand let, let me, for election. But let me explain to you. So I don't support independence. I don't support a referendum. We stood on that basis in the election yeah. campaign. It's a mistake. Yeah, but that's fine. You, but you, would lo you lost. You lost this election. Yeah. The SNP won it. With the Greens, they have a mandate. Well, they're You're denying their mandate. You're I, denying I, I, democracy, I, I actually. MPs were asked to leave the chamber by the Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, and that was for shouting, Scotland has a mandate for a referendum. You don't have the right to dictate to a government what its agenda should be. The Scottish people have voted in this particular government, which had independence, an independence referendum, not even independence, in an independence referendum. Which they said said as which they said settled the question center. for a generation. No, no, they didn't say that. In 2016, they said, Sturgeon said that, uh, and she had it in her 2016 Scottish Parliament manifesto, that if there was a material change in circumstances, which everyone can agree Brexit was, then that would um, that would relitigate the case. Sturgeon is trying to hold an illegal referendum in um, order to distract well, from her own all, feelings. Well, look, I mean, look, first of all, it's, it hasn't been determined illegal yet. It's going to be determined it's illegal. Well, okay, fine. Well, let's, hit, let's wait for the Supreme Court to say um, what they think uh, about the legality of it. It's actually not the point. If the, the Scottish people cannot be kept in the union by force, you're talking Absolutely about not. how you're talking about how. To, well, then, what are the options for seceding from the union? What options the Scottish people have? The SNP has stood on a manifesto of holding a new independence referendum in the last four national elections in Scotland. And it has won every single one of those elections. What more can the Scottish people and do before to some of those, And before some of those votes, including the last one, it said, this is not a referendum on independence. This is, and then as soon as it was elected, anyone went, oh, actually... What do you mean? It, has, it had an independence referendum in its uh, 2017 yeah. uh, general election manifesto, 2019, last 2021. What more, how can the Scottish people request a referendum? And how on earth is it... For 
for one person Downing Street, but Boris Johnson or Liz Truss to overturn the rule that the Scottish people do probably want a referendum. They do not want one now. But they've they've elected a government which wants one. It had it in its manifesto. I think the assumption seems to have been that the issue would go away rather than resurface, and there was this reliance on a slogan of once in a generation. But that was just that, a slogan. It's got the same constitutional standing as the £350 million for the NHS per week on a bus, and it doesn't invalidate the results of the election held yesterday. So I think, in a sense, it was a very difficult election constitutionally, actually, because it was an election dominated by the independence question. But there are no guidelines as to what happens now, and we're heading for a real constitutional dilemma with a conflict of mandate, if you like, as it does appear likely that there will be a pro-independence referendum. The pro-independence movement will have uh, a mandate. Um, the, the Prime Minister and the government in, uh, of the United Kingdom have the force of law. I would expect even if they lost a Supreme Court case, the, the majority is there in the House of Commons to change the law to make sure any referendum uh, cannot uh, take place lawfully. And I don't. I would dismiss then so-called wildcat or illegal activity because it's not in the Scottish government or the Scottish independence movement's uh, interest uh, to do things like unilateral declarations of independence because that would make the path to an independent Scottish state, its recognition by other countries, um, very, very difficult. So fundamentally, this is a clash of mandate and law where it will be decided by politics. And it goes to the absolute heart of the question. We have been told for many decades now that it's a voluntary union, but at the moment there is no lawful democratic path to the pursuit of Scottish independence. And that remains the case, and that really is the missing part of the constitutional jigsaw that the United Kingdom government has to answer at some point, because at the moment, whatever is said about what, how, how high up the priority list independence is in various polls, it was unmissable in this election, the independence referendum question uh, on both the SNP and the Green and indeed the Scottish Conservatives um, side. And in effect, the results of the, the conclusion of that election on that major uh, leading issue is going to be set aside, is what we're hearing tonight. Well, you'd oppose having a referendum, but you wouldn't say that constitutionally the British government should but stop it. Constitutionally, the, the UK government shouldn't block it, Bill. Shouldn't block it. Uh, yeah. I think people broadly speaking think that if the Scots want to go their own way, then they should be let to go their own way.